Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Brain Bean, and today we're going to be taking a look at the First Player Steampunk, which is a budget mechanical keyboard that comes in just over 50 bucks. Now, I was pretty impressed with First Player's Fire Rose keyboard that I reviewed a couple months back, so I'm expecting pretty good things out of this keyboard as well. And just to kind of get back to you guys, because I know I haven't put out a lot of content during this whole moving process, since this is my first review that I've done since I've got the new setup and everything, I'm going to be giving one of these keyboards away to one of my subscribers. I'll have all the details in a link down below in the description for you guys. But for now, let's go ahead and just take a look at this keyboard. Starting with the keyboard's construction and design, the Steampunk is a 104 key mechanical keyboard with an exposed switch design. The switches are mounted onto a high purity steel plate. This makes the keyboard incredibly solid, offering absolutely zero flex no matter how hard I crank down on it. The Steampunk just might be the heaviest keyboard I've reviewed yet. The steel plate is mounted in a plastic casing with some stylistic accents that border the keys. Overall, the Steampunk has a pretty clean look that really doesn't feel that over-designed. The switches on the Steampunk are kale white switches which are fairly similar to the Cherry MX Blues. They have a 50 gram actuation force, a 2 mm actuation point with a 4 mm total travel distance. And while kale switches aren't my favorite, I do consider them to be a step above Altimu switches so you will be getting some decent middle of the road switches and at this price I think that's a pretty good switch for the money. The Kale White switch offers a nice audible click during use, but they do have a fair amount of key wobble, much more so than the classic Cherry MX Blue. Here's a quick sound test so you guys can hear how these switches sound. The keycaps are double shot ABS plastic with a non-slip textured surface. The font is fairly minimalistic and is sort of the standard look you see in more affordable mechanical keyboards. And all the secondary functions on the keys are also illuminated which is one thing that I always look for. The feel of the non-slip textured keys isn't necessarily my favorite part, but then again for the price they're more than acceptable. The Steampunk is a backlit keyboard but unfortunately it only comes with red lighting. I can see this being a bit of a drawback for those looking for an RGB keyboard, but realistically with a price of just $55, I wouldn't expect to get a good RGB mechanical keyboard anyways. While the Steampunk isn't RGB, its red backlighting still comes with a few preset lighting effects. One plus, depending on how you look at it, is since there's only one color of lighting, you don't need to install any software to control the lights since it's all toggled on the board. You can choose between effects like Wave, Ripple, Breathing, and Reactive just to name a few. The lights all look pretty good, clearly illuminating the keycaps, and the clear switch bodies of the kale switches accentuate the lights nicely thanks to this exposed switch design. The LED indicators are made up of nice simple red LEDs with some stylistic red trim. There's also an indicator for the windows lock mode as well. The cable on the Steampunk is braided with a nice red and black pattern and it also has a gold plated USB connector. The underside of the keyboard has 5 rubberized pads and 2 rubberized extendable legs to make sure that this beast doesn't slide around your desk during use. But with how heavy it is, I really don't see that being a problem at all. In terms of features, the Steampunk does have full N key rollover, a Windows lock mode for gaming and media controls by way of the function key. There's also a detachable magnetic wrist rest which I actually was really surprised to see a keyboard at this price point come with. That said, this is a really simple plastic wrist rest, you won't find any rubber or cushioned padding. But for those of you that like wrist rest, it's a lot better than nothing. The magnets really don't do a whole lot to hold the keyboard in place, but thanks to the sheer weight of the keyboard, it really does a good job of holding the wrist rest in place fairly well. Overall, the first player Steampunk left me a little bit surprised, much like the Fire Rose of theirs that I reviewed a few months back. It certainly isn't the best keyboard out there with its lack of dedicated media and macro keys and the lack of RGB in this very much RGB era. But for the price of 55 bucks, what you do get is an incredibly rugged mechanical keyboard with switches that are better than your average budget mechanical keyboard. Add to that the detachable wrist rest and the fact that you're getting a full sized keyboard, the Steampunk is a budget mechanical keyboard that I feel more than comfortable recommending at this price. Well that's it for the video guys, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about this keyboard and feel free to give me some suggestions as to what you want to see me review next. Consider giving the video a like if you enjoyed it to show your support and if you'd like this video and you want to see more content from me in the future, you can also click that subscribe button so you can see all the content that I have coming out in the near future. You can also follow me on Twitter at BrainBeam Gaming and if you'd like to catch my live stream on Twitch, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash Gaming. Well that's it guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.